Well, hello there, Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. I hope everybody's doing great out there. As great as could be expected. So I'm going to do some more hockey brush painting. Really have been enjoying using these, and I just keep thinking of ways I want to try them. And I've been wanting to do another cloudscape video anyway. And I think hockey brushes are great for cloudscapes. They just put down a lot of color and a lot of water uh, at once, and it's great for pre-wetting as you see me doing here and uh, just adding some really interesting cloud brush marks. So that's what I decided to do and I'm using that gradient that I did on this watercolor block a couple of videos ago. I don't want to waste it. I'm turning it upside down because uh, this is going to be kind of a twilight scene. I didn't know it at the time I was painting it but as you'll see, it kind of develops into a, a kind of a moonlit twilight scene. And I wanted the gradient to kind of be at the bottom and be the water. And I'm going to put a wash up here in the upper right corner of Prussian blue. Just I'm going to add sort of a, an aqua-ish or a little uh, more of a greenish blue tint to that corner. So that's what you see me doing now. And the entire painting has been pre-wet. I could have sprayed it down, but I brushed it, just brushed it lightly. And that's fine since it was a gradient, pretty horizontal. I just use very light horizontal strokes. But this Prussian blue, I'm just going to add a little bit of a sky kind of aqua-ish tint. And then we're going to get into the clouds. I think one of the things I've still been struggling with in these brushes is how much water they hold. And you can just see it running right down to the bottom here. I'm having to get used to the idea that once the surface of the paper is wet, uh, I need to greatly reduce the water in the brush. And of course, the shedding, as you can see right there. I'm still fighting a little bit of that, although it's getting better. But man, the water, uh, it's, they're like flat mops, basically. Um, and if you've used a mop, you know how much they hold and how much you have to uh, adjust for that. So I'm realizing that once the surface of the paper is, is thoroughly wet, I've got to greatly reduce that water and just get some pretty strong pigment in the brush. So that's what I'm doing. So I just wanted a dramatic kind of, cloudy, wispy, cloudy sky. And I decided to blot right here, sort of in the center, just right of center, to preserve that light area. Uh, I wanted a light area. And uh, if you blot those areas after they've been wet, you'll, you'll keep water from flowing into them. So that's what I'm doing. And it's kind of making it look like a moonlit scene. Like that center cloud there has the moon behind it or something. And uh, if you've seen my video on how to make a landscape glow or a sunset glow, um, and I'll put a link to that, uh, you know that the best way to do that is just to bring the value of everything else down till your light source, your brightest area, is the only thing left. And that's what I'm doing. So uh, adding a bit of a ground plane here, and it's probably going to be sort of a, a lake with a few kind of scattered land masses. And once again, I just I love playing with the organic nature of what these brushes will do. They cover so much ground and they just add these really interesting marks. Uh, and as the paper dries and I use uh, more pigment and get less movement, you can kind of see them. Just ground effects turn out really great. I was, I was really loving that. Brush was starting to, to break apart on me a little bit, the, the fiber, so it was a little difficult to get a knife edge, but it still made some neat marks. Now I'm just going in with that uh, John Solomon technique, and I've, I've really uh, found that to be useful. I want to bring the value of those clouds down, make them darker, 
and blend them in. So adding a little bit more dark pigment as everything's still damp the surface but everything is moving a little less and back to blending. That's great because you don't have to use water to if you want to soften an edge. I really have found this to be a very utilitarian technique. So now I'm just adding a little more of that Prussian blue around the outer edge. Uh, sort of a glaze. I really wished I had put that in in the, in the initial washes, but uh, I feel like I just needed some more color over there to kind of match that upper right. But it's alright, a glaze is working, so I just kind of uh, added that in. You can see that center light area behind the, the cloud there, that's all starting to glow a little bit now as I bring the value down and everything else. And as I continue to add a little of that Prussian blue glaze around the outer perimeter. And I love how much uh, territory you can cover in a painting with a hockey brush. I think they, they, it's probably their biggest draw. And they put these kind of little marks as you go and almost seem to be painting details for you. But you cover so much. It's sort of a, a Bob Ross approach to watercolor. Now I'm just gently uh, stroking in a distant hill. We're going to start building uh, this foreground. Just putting it in faintly and then we'll build on top of that. Oh and I wanted to give a shout out to two more YouTube uh, painters that use hockey brushes uh, very exclusively and do wonderful work with them. That's Lois Davidson and Joe Mensa. Uh, several of you viewers alerted me to them and I hope you'll check out their channel. I'll put links below. And it's, again, this is uh, wet over dry. And, and that allows me now to actually paint uh, some more distinct forms. You'll see what I'm talking about, how um, these hockey brushes, they just, uh, they're so great at texture. Especially if you're stroking uh, these forms along the horizon or along the ground plane. I'm using various mixture, by the way, uh, neutral tint, M-gram neutral tint, anthraquinone blue, some perylene maroon, a little bit of Payne's gray on occasion. It was hard to hear to get precise, and I'm, I'm quickly getting to the point where I'm going to need to move to a smaller brush. But I want to get this uh, hockey to paint just as much of the effects as I can because it's, it's just doing such an interesting job at it and I'm going to leave a lot of area that looks kind of like water here you see my last strokes with the hockey Now I've switched to a Da Vinci Cosmotop Spin Oval Wash and now I'm just going to kind of clean up some of that detail and add a little bit to it. Not really adding a lot of detail, I'm just defining a few spots. The, really the hockey brush did so much for me that I don't need to, so it's really kind of cool. But I'm, I'm just kind of defining those, those landforms out into the water and adding some more distinct uh, tree shapes just in places just in a few places now this was an appropriate uh, place for this technique this is 80 grit sandpaper and I wanted to add some sparkles on the water this works best uh, you got to do it on dry paper this works best in a dark painting where you have dark paint I think and you just fold uh, that sandpaper to a knife edge and stroke horizontally along uh, the ground plane or the water plane in this case 
and you get what looks like uh, water sparkles. Uh, if you do it with finer sandpaper, you won't get quite the same effect. So I would recommend 80 or 65 grit. This is 80, as I mentioned. And it's kind of lining up. I'm doing it across, but uh, most of it's lining up with that light area behind the cloud. So it looks like reflections of, of moonlight. And you can go in, I'm, I'm using a scrubber here, and lighten just some of the water generally in the area. So I decided to do that, just to sort of bring the value up in that area. And now I've got sort of a reflection that lines up with the moon, if you will. And you can even go in uh, with a finer detail brush and just add some darker ripples to the water. So that's what I'm doing here. Just maybe below some of those little white reflections or white sparkles. And I'm going to call that done. I really don't need to do a lot more. That was just a great hockey brush experiment. And I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. So let's go on and do a different one. I have this uh, roughly 6 by 12 uh, horizontal block. I've had this for, man, uh, probably three years and just never used it. And I thought, oh, this would probably be a good time to do this and do a cloudscape with this. We're going to go with a totally different color scheme. And by the way, if you have Arches blocks, uh, these, cover, these black cover sheets are actually watercolor paper and you can paint on the white side of them or use them as scrap if nothing else so i wanted a nice uh, clean edge on this one so i'm taping it off with white artist tape and toning it in it's it's been completely pre-wet i almost forgot to start recording this so it was completely pre-wet uh, with a brush and now i'm adding in uh, some clouds and we're going to have a light area to the far right and then sort of streaky, wispy clouds angling towards that light area. It's a combination of quinacridone, nickel quinacridone gold from M. Graham, some perylene maroon. Uh, at times you'll see a little sepia get thrown in there. And on occasion, some neutral tint. I really love M. Graham's neutral tint because it has a slight violet cast to it um yeah it's my favorite neutral tint i mean m graham is one of my favorites anyway but even if it wasn't it, this would by far be my favorite neutral tint because of that it reminds me a lot of the daniel smith moon glow which is also a favorite so you can see these wispy streaky clouds coming in and they're they're going to sort of point to the center of interest or the center of focus and the light source which will be sort of like a veiled hazy sunset and uh, establishing a ground plane I'm gonna throw in some some hills and some landforms there's gonna be less water in this will be a little bit I guess and we'll just have some little tree forms kind of break up into the sunset. And while it's still damp, I'm just adding a little bit more of the, uh, some red iron oxides coming in there, a tiny bit of Payne's gray. And uh, blotting there, as you saw, just to help keep that white area white. And you're going to see the dry brush effect again. And I love it. Just help me soften a whole lot of those clouds. And it's still damp, so I've got a tissue here, and I just wanted to model in some light clouds right there by where the sunset is.
So just picking up some of the damp paint with a dry tissue, facial tissue. Everything's uh, continuing to radiate away from that, that bright area. Now I'm just putting in a very pale uh, hill, distant hill line, a horizon. That's a mostly neutral tint, maybe a little bit of perylene maroon in there, so it's got slightly more of a violet cast. And then we're just going to start uh, breaking that horizon with some tree forms. And see those, again, love those organic shapes that go in that ground texture that the hockey brush is making. Just don't even have to do a lot of, of finessing detail painting with a brush. It's just, you know, so much of it is done for you. I love it. Red iron oxide, a lot of it sepia, uh, some perylene maroon, a little bit of Payne's gray. And the major forms, uh, land and tree, are just about done. And now all I'm doing is just uh, cleaning up some of that detail and defining it a tiny bit in places. Uh, popping contrast a little more solidly, I guess you might say. Adding a few more distinct tree forms and details. Just to give our eye a few better clues to what's going on. Adding some contrast to the base of, so, of those land extensions. And we're really getting to nearly the end of this. I do want to do a little bit of lifting just to define some edges uh, and bring a little dimension to some of the foreground trees and landform. So pulling off the tape. This is very satisfying. It's always great to do this and see what kind of painting you have. Just wanted to increase the contrast up there in those clouds, especially as we get near the sunset area. Just for a little extra drama in that spot. And here's the lifting I'm talking about. I'm just using a nylon bristle brush like you might use for acrylic painting. It's a little bit stiffer, but not as stiff as a lifter. And you can see it's just defining a few little foreground shapes and adding some edges. And then I'm going to uh, also go in and paint uh, some contrast, some darker contrast around some of that. So a lot of it's left loose, but um, adding definition here and there. And that's done, I think. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, patrons, for your support. I really appreciate it. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.